I'm Peter Neal, director of the World Ocean Observatory. Quote, I expect to see in the near future a massive expansion of investment in the water sector, including the production of fresh, clean water from other sources, desalinization and purification, storage, shipping, and transportation of water. I expect to see pipeline networks that will exceed the capacity of those for oil and gas today. I see fleets and water tankers and storage facilities that will dwarf those we currently have for oil, natural gas, and LNG. I see new canal systems dug for water transportation, similar in ambition and scale to those currently in progress in China, linking the Yangtze River in the south to the Yellow River in the arid north. I also hope and expect that these new canal ventures will be designed and implemented with a greater awareness of the environmental and social impact of such mega-projects. India will have to engage in investment on a scale comparable to that seen today in China to produce clean water in the best locations and transport it where the household, industrial, and agricultural users are. I expect to see a globally integrated market for fresh water within 25 to 30 years. Once the spot markets for water are integrated, futures markets, and other derivative water-based financial instruments, puts, calls, and swaps, both exchange-traded and OTC will follow. There will be different grades and types of fresh water, just the way we have light, sweet, and heavy, sour crude oil today. Water as an asset class will, in my view, become eventually the single most important physical commodity-based asset class, dwarfing oil, copper, agricultural commodities, and precious metals Unquote. So writes Willem Butler, an economist at the Global Markets Division of the International Bank Citigroup, in an essay for the July 2011 Investor Analysis and Strategy newsletter, Thirsty Cities, Urbanization to Drive Water Demand, about the future of water as an investment and trading commodity. The paper surveys the growth of world population and its concentration in urban areas, consequent rising demands, resultant pressure on existing supplies, and investment implications. The report lists 12 companies with, quote, material exposure to water, unquote, deriving significant percentages of their total revenue from water testing, individual and industrial treatment, pumps, chlorinators and filters, disinfection systems, chemicals and softeners, automatic sampling devices, meters, plant engineering and construction, management and operations for large corporate and municipal users, and the design and implementation of desalination plants. Economists do see the world differently from you and me. Here are some further quotations from that essay that are instructive. Quote, From an economic perspective, there is nothing terribly special about water. It is an ordinary, regular commodity, a private good that can be allocated effectively and efficiently by markets and provided by private, profit-motivated producers, unquote. Quote, Many production and consumptive activities whose primary purpose is not the production or consumption of water have water pollution as a byproduct, joint product, or externality. Internalizing and or pricing and charging for these externalities is clearly a huge, important political, and social enterprise for the future, unquote. Quote, is water a merit good? A merit good is a commodity of which a particular society believes that should be provided to individuals or households on the basis of need, rather than ability and willingness to pay. Provision should therefore not be based on consumer choice alone, quote. Quote, merit goods have about them a whiff of paternalism, and of the philosopher king technocratic right to nudge the indigent and or ignorant into directions and toward actions deemed to be in their best interest if only they knew or were able to commit appropriately, unquote. Breeder continues, quote, Before getting to the nitty-gritty of how to allocate, distribute, ration, or price water, I will dispose of a couple of pervasive fallacies and non sequiturs. Fallacy 1. Water is essential for life, and therefore it should come free. We disagree. Water is indeed essential for life. That is why it should be priced or physically rationed to reflect its scarcity value. After all, food is essential for life. Should food be free? Opportunity cost, the value of the last pint of water you use for purpose A in its best alternative use, 
should guide the allocation and distribution of water. Fallacy 2. Water comes free from God, therefore it should come free. We disagree, and the rebuttal is independent of whether one believes in any kind of deity. After all, diamonds come free from God. Should diamonds therefore come free to everyone who wants them? Scarcity and opportunity costs are the drivers of fair and efficient allocation and distribution. Unquote. This is just one economist's analysis in one investment publication, but it is a representative argument, and very much in opposition to those who see present-day disputes over water as a major cause of instability in war, fear the financialization of water as a dangerous force against individual and community health, define water as a public trust, and argue that a basic allocation of water is an essential human right. This may be the single most important debate of our time. We will discuss these issues and more in future editions of World Ocean Radio.